Shalom, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat, and welcome to Biblical Hebrew Foundation. And today I'm going to be speaking to you about judgment. What does it mean to be judged as a believer? And what does it mean to be judged by God as a non-believer? So grab a pen, paper, and a Bible, because we're going to dig deep into the Word of God. The Bible is clear. If you don't give your life to Yeshua, to Jesus, as your personal Savior, at the judgment, you're going to be punished for your bad works. But if you're born again, if you've given your life to Yeshua, Jesus, as your personal Savior, at the judgment, you're going to be rewarded for your good works, the crowns. And that's what the Bible teaches in context. And so many times when you hear the word judgment, you think it's a bad word. But if you're a believer in Yeshua, if you believe that he died on the tree on the cross for your sins, that he rolls on the third day, and by his blood, if you repent and believe, you have full redemption of sins and eternal life, then for you, the word judgment is not a bad word. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. It is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. And so we're going to do a study today based on the biblical Hebrew foundation and see how that is a good thing for believers. It is appointed for man to die once and then the judgment. Let's look at some Bible verses and get some context to this. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Galut, Revelation 20, verse 13. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one, according to his works. In Hebrew, hem nishpetu lefiavodatam. Each one was judged according to his works. From the word in Hebrew, nishpetu. 1 Peter 1, verse 17. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work. So we can see this is a biblical pattern. God is going to judge each person according to his works. We're not saved by work. We're saved by grace. But the Bible is clear that God will judge us according to our work. 1 Peter 1.17, I'm going to read that again. And if we call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work. Let's continue to read the verse. Conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. Matthew 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Brothers and sisters, this is a biblical pattern in context. Revelation 22, verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to every one according to his work. So the Bible is clear. Each and every one is going to be judged for his works. Now, it's important to realize, when we speak about Chaim Lanetzach, eternity, where we spend eternity is based on our belief. But how we spend eternity is based upon our behavior. So it is important how you live. Yes, if you call on the name of Yeshua, you are saved. If you repent and believe that he is God, that he is the Messiah, that he died on the tree and the cross for your sins, you are saved. You have eternal life. That's a gift by grace. But now there's the fruit of the believer, how you behave, how you live your life out. And the Bible is clear. Every person is going to be judged according to his or her works. But your belief determines your behavior. I'm going to say it again. Your belief determines your behavior. So now we're going to talk about unbelievers and believers and see the difference in the judgment. Because that there's a big difference on how we're judged for our works for believers and non-believers. Revelation 20, verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened, and another book was opened. So notice here, books, plural, and another book, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Verse 13, the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged each one according to his works. It's very important to understand that there are two judgments. There's a great white throne judgment, and there's the judgment seat of Yeshua, the judgment seat of Christ. And whether you believe in Yeshua will determine which judgment you go to. 
every person at the great white throne judgment is an unbeliever. And every person at the judgment seat of Yeshua, the judgment seat of Christ, is a believer in Yeshua. So the great white throne, judgment for non-believers. The judgment seat of Yeshua, judgment for believers. Great white throne, not saved. Judgment seat of Yeshua, saved. So your destiny is based upon what you believe. You believe in Yeshua or don't believe in Yeshua. But how you spend separation from God, if you're a non-believer, if you don't believe in Yeshua, or how you spend eternity in heaven, in the kingdom, as a believer, is determined upon your behavior. Once again, I want to be clear. Salvation is by faith. If you believe that Yeshua died on the tree on the cross for your sins, if you repent, and you believe that he's God, you have eternal life. But how you spend eternal life in the kingdom is based upon your behavior. Notice the books and the book. So the books are works. That's what the Bible says, and I'm paraphrasing. The books were opened, and each were judged according to his works. And the book is the book of life. We know it's the book of life because the Bible tells us it's the book of life. If we go down a few verses, Revelation 20, verse 15, it says, And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hebrew, it says, Sefer HaChaim, the book of life. So you want your name in that book. How do you get your name in that book? By changing your mind so God will change your heart, who Yeshua is. If you believe that he is the Messiah, that he's God, that we're small people with a big God, that he died on the cross on the tree for your sins. He rose on the third day. And by his blood, if you repent and believe, you have full redemption of sins, then you are written in the book of life. Sefer HaChaim. So when you do that, you will show up at the judgment seat of Yeshua, the judgment seat of Christ. The one who rejects Yeshua as the Messiah, rejects Yeshua as God, he will be in the great white throne judgment. So there's two judgments. There's a judgment for believer and there's judgment for non-believers. Each person that believes in Yeshua will be in the judgment seat of Christ, the judgment seat of Yeshua. Each person that rejects Yeshua will be in the great white throne judgment. That is what the Bible teaches in context. Unbelievers are judged according to their works, and they're punished according to their works. That's what the Bible teaches. There are degrees of punishment. Before we read the scriptures to back up what I'm saying, I want you to think about this for a moment. A non-believer who was someone that went to work, had a family, maybe did some good deeds, but rejected Yeshua as the Messiah— for he's going to be out of the kingdom. He will be in the lake of fire. That's what the Bible teaches. But is he going to receive the same judgment like Hitler? Is he going to receive the same judgment like Osama bin Laden? Is he going to receive the same judgment like Haman, Haman? Of course not. He's going to be separated from God. He's going to go through the great white throne judgment. But the reason there is a great white throne judgment is each one is going to be judged according to his works. And there are degrees of punishment. The punishment that... Osama bin Laden gets, Hitler gets, is not the same punishment of someone else. And I'm going to show you in the Bible that in biblical context. Although the non-believer is going to be separated from God for eternity, you need to remember that God is a just God. The Bible is clear. Unbelievers are going to be punished to the degree of their sin. Look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 21. Woe to you, Chorazin. This is Jesus. This is Yeshua speaking. Woe to you, Bethsheda. Works were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, and we'll get into these two cities in a moment, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes, which means they would have changed their mind. They would have repented. And by the way, this is Yeshua speaking. This is Jesus. This is God speaking. He didn't say they could have repented. He said, if they have seen what you have seen, they would have repented. Matthew 11, verse 22. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre, in Hebrew, this word Tarloa means more lenient. Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. Look at verse 23. And you, Capernaum, Kfalnachum in Hebrew, and you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Speaking, of course, of Sodom and Gomorrah, Zdom Vamora in Hebrew. Look at verse 24. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. Let's read that again. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom 
in the day of judgment than for you. Now, here is what's so amazing about that statement that Yeshua made. If those mighty works would have done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But let me tell you a little bit about Tyre and Sidon. There were two cities north of Israel. There were port cities. The Bible says in Ayume Komoche Namal, port cities. They were sea merchants. There are four main sins are listed for Tyre and Sidon. They're listed in Ezekiel, in Amos, Amos, and in Joel, Yoel. I'm not going to read all of them. I'm just going to read the one in Joel. And the Bible is clear. And one of their big sins that they were involved in was child trafficking. Let's read the scripture. Yoel, Joel, chapter 3, verse 3. They have cast lots for my people, have given a boy as a payment for a harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. They were selling children for sex and alcohol. But Yeshua says, Chorazin, Betsheba, and Capernaum, Kfanafum. By the way, Capernaum was uh, Yeshua's hometown where he did all the miracles. He spent most of his ministry over there. And the word Capernaum in Hebrew means Kfar Nachum, which means the city of the comforter. And we know that Yeshua is our comforter. And he says, you three cities are going to be judged more harshly than Tyre, Sidon, and Sodom. And here is why. Look at Matthew 11, verse 20. Then he began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. We know based on the account, based on the ministry of Yeshua in the flesh, that most of his mighty works were done in these three cities. And that's why he's saying, if the mighty works which have been done in you had been done in three of the most wicked cities ever, they would have repented and even remained until this day. It's pretty amazing. Romans 2 verse 5. But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Yeshua said those who give to the kingdom, those who are serving the kingdom, you're treasuring up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And he's now here speaking to people that have not repented. You are treasuring up wrath. So it's very clear based on the word of God in context. And I'm just showing you a few Bible verses. There are so many more. I can go into hundreds of Bible verses to show you that there are degrees of wrath. There are degrees of judgment for non-believers according to the word of God. But the good news is the ones who are judged in the judgment seat of Yeshua, the judgment seat of Christ, the believers. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, the judgment seat of Yeshua, that each one may receive the things done in the body. I'm going to read that again. For we must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, the judgment seat of Yeshua, that each one may receive the things done in the body. Romans 14, verse 10. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, the judgment seat of Yeshua. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 10. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. If you've accepted Yeshua, you are now building on that foundation. Verse 11. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Yeshua, Jesus. Look at 1 Corinthians 3.12. Let's continue. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Remember, this foundation is Yeshua. It's Jesus. Now, he's going to lay three things that are eternal and three things that are temporary. Let's read it again. If anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. So gold, silver, and precious stones are eternal. And what I mean by eternal, what the Bible means is the last through fire, which is a picture of a judgment in this context. And then the three that are temporary, wood, hay, and straw. Verse 13, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work 
of what sort it is. Verse 14, if anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. First Corinthians 3.15, if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet so as through the fire, meaning he would suffer any reward he would have received. Again, it's clear. It shows that we're saved by the blood of Yeshua, not by works, but we're still judged by our works. Those are the crowns. That's clear. So how do you know whether what you're doing is an eternal work or a temporary work? Matthew 6, verse 1. Take heed that you do not do your terrible deeds before men to be seen by them. Now, obviously, God seeks the heart. Every terrible deed that you do, you can't do in secret. You volunteer in a homeless shelter or you volunteer like here in Israel. We, we do a lot of work for the Holocaust survivors. So obviously, you can't do everything in secret. But there is a context to the Bible. And the context is God seeks the heart. Don't do things to be seen by man. Do things for Yeshua. Everything is about him. And so he seeks the heart. He knows the heart. So God knows, Yeshua knows, whether you're doing something with a motive to be seen or you're doing something to serve Yeshua. When you do it for the kingdom, when you do it for Yeshua, when you do it to actually help the person, that receives an eternal reward. When you do it to be seen, it's burned up. Let's continue to read the verse and back it up. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Matthew 6, verse 2. Therefore, when you do a terrible deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a terrible deed, not to let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, verse 4, that your terrible deed may be in secret and your father who sees it in secret, will himself reward you openly. Wow, what a verse. That is an amazing Bible verse, that the Father himself is going to reward you one day. Let's bring this all together. Let's conclude this. Here's the way judgment is a bad word for those who don't put their faith, who don't believe in Yeshua, but it's a good word for those who believe in Yeshua. If you don't give your life to Yeshua, at the judgment, you're going to be punished, onish in Hebrew, punished, for your bad works, there are degrees of punishment. But if you give your life to Yeshua, to Jesus, at the judgment, you're going to be rewarded for your good works. Totally different for a believer and a non-believer. Hallelujah. Every person, it's appointed to die. And after that, the judgment. But if you don't give your life to Yeshua, you'll be punished. If you give your life to Yeshua, you'll be rewarded. I pray this teaching has blessed you as it has blessed me over the years. Let's continue to stand together as the one new man, Ephesians 2.15. Work the harvest. Bring the gospel back to Jerusalem and go home. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat sending you blessings from Israel in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Aye Yehuda, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the great I Am, Jesus Yeshua. Amen. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua, Jesus, is God. Hallelujah. Amen. Those just joining us at home, I'm going to introduce this week's special guests. Born and raised in Israel, he served several years in the Israeli Defense Forces and is the founder and director of Messiah of Israel Ministries, Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat. Yay! Good to have you back. Dr. Tom Horn, who is the CEO of Skywatch TV, an acclaimed best-selling author himself, raves about Blood Alliance. He says, Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat has done it again. In Blood Alliance, he's taken several deep mysteries of God's Word and served them up in a thoroughly understandable, engrossing, and biblically contextual manner. I assure you, he says, once you see the truths that Zev brings into glorious revelation, you'll soon begin to recognize those truths throughout the Scriptures, hidden in plain sight from first to last. Blood Alliance is an absolute treasure trove. Have you ever heard of God's Threshold Covenant? If you haven't, 
you're in for a roller coaster ride of biblical discovery that will enhance your understanding of God's Word and the application of it to your daily life like never before. Messianic Rabbi Zef Parad will be taking you on a much deeper dive than you've probably ever previously experienced. In Blood Alliance, you'll come to understand the true nature of spiritual warfare like never before. You'll uncover the biblical truth about long-held traditions that still assault God's truth and His grace to this very day, throwing massive doctrinal confusion into almost the entire modern Christian church world. Finally, learn the truth about the temple on the Temple Mount and what the Old Testament and New Testament clearly lay out for the last days. Shocking surprises await you. This truly is a life-changing book to the glory of Yeshua, Jesus.